Is it really advisable to grow plants in the attic? What sort of things do you think you should check for? And how should you prepare the space to maximize your chance of personal success? Well, amigos, you've got questions and I've got answers. So let's answer them. Are you fit? I mean fit like healthy exercise running gym type fit. If so, good for you. You'll probably love hauling buckets of water up and down the stairs to your new attic growing room. Me, I got a sink and drain installed, soon to be followed by a reverse osmosis filter because in my world, buckets of water and stairs <laughs> suck. But let's back up a second. Growing in your attic presents some inherent challenges, none of which are insurmountable, but you should be aware of from the get-go. First, consider your access. I'm lucky in that I have this door, albeit with a handy proportion of lowered ceiling here, ideal for a head-butting practice. You on the other hand, may only have a tiny loft hatch to fit everything through, so bear this in mind before buying that 4x4 grow tray. Next, check the flooring. Like, is there any? If not, you'll need floorboards, obviously. I have this tiled floor, which is fine, but there's absolutely no sound attenuation, so the slightest vibration from pumps or fans creates quite a hum in the rooms below. Something to be mindful of if growing above a bedroom, for instance. Although I find you can train kids to get used to it. <laughs> No, seriously. I set my rainforest propagation system on some foam, and this does the trick quite nicely. Now, while we're on the subject of floors, consider the flood risk to the living quarters below. I'm growing these in tents, which can contain leaks pretty well, but I'll probably also invest in some plastic sheeting, just to be sure. You're gonna need electricity. Really? Yeah. Grow lights, fans, oh, pumps, and environmental control gear, but be sure to count your watts. Ideally, have a professional electrician install a new dedicated circuit and separate lighting controller as I've done here. Most modern day residential circuits are 15 or 20 amps. Check the label for 120 volts electricity. That's a max load of 1800 or 2400 watts before the breaker trips. Note that most breakers are designed for just 85% of the circuit's capacity to be used continuously. For 15 amps, that's 1530 watts, and for 20 amps, that's 2040 watts. Next, ventilation. Yes, your attic may already feel cool and airy, but check in a few grow lights and that feeling will soon disappear. Ideally, install some ventilated roof tiles like this and position them tactically. The maximum diameter I could find was 6 inches, which is fine for venting these two grow tents if I add a third, which is highly likely. <laughs> I'll just add a Y piece to double dip. You can also adapt any windows to become light tent ventilation ports using a duct collar. On to insulation, arguably one of the most important and overlooked aspects of attic growing. Not only will your home benefit from a well-insulated roof, but your plants certainly will too. Summer highs in my part of the world regularly exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and these are in the shade temperatures, people. Obviously, roofs tend to get pummeled by lots of direct sun too, which can send grow room temperatures skyrocketing. Running your lights at night when ambient temperatures are cooler will significantly help. Buy the best insulation with the highest R factor and put it everywhere. I've used mineral wool that has an R factor of 3.4 per inch at around 8 inches of thickness. Then I covered it all in plasterboard. Note that this has significantly reduced the vertical space that I have available, so if space is a premium, look at more space efficient polyurethane board or spray foam. The fall is the kindest time of year to kick off an attic row. By the time winter comes around, you can be flowering and fruiting and the cooler ambient temperatures can actually work in your favor to offset heat of your HPS lights, especially when running them at night. While we're on the subject of space, attics can be tricky with beams getting in the way, reduced vertical space and sloped ceilings all adding to the fun. The trick is to work with your space, not against it. The eaves can be a great spot for propagation with T5s or LEDs. The higher spaces may be able to accommodate a 400 or 600 watt HID. I really wouldn't recommend going any higher unless you have 9 feet or more to play with. Final points, attics tend to be dusty and dirty, so give them a good clean before you start. Grow tents, if you can fit them up there, are ideal for carving out a happy space for your plants. If you live in a cold climate, check for black mold growth and get it professionally dealt with before installing your garden. Don't forget about getting fresh water in and spent nutrient solution out of your garden. As summer approaches, I'll definitely be looking into some cooling options for my attic grow too, as well as switching to air-cooled hoods. Okay, my attic has actually got another room here, which is currently full of... this... I have plans for this room too. I'm liking the higher ceilings and it seems ideal for a flowering room. I just need to clear it out first or bribe my wife or kids into doing it for me. Okay, I hope this gives you an idea of my plans for this year. Basically, there are three separate spaces for propagation, veg, and flowering. It's going to be a lot of fun, so I'm really hoping that you'll subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on so you get pinged when I upload these because I'm really as important as a text message from your mom. Take care, amigos. This is Everest way up high in his newly converted sky parlor waving goodbye.